What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome back to another part of my Unreal Engine 5 action RPG tutorial series. In this video we are going to be setting up the weapon mesh so that we can switch it between the back and the hand of the character while we are playing the equip animation. So in the previous we actually set up the equip animation and we didn't get enough time to set this up in the same video. So I decided to just split it up into two so that you know we wouldn't have to rush it. Also, uh, we are going to be using this weapon pack, which is the Free Fantasy Weapon Sample Pack. I haven't tried this before in the previous series and in my other prototypes. I used the Infinity Blade weapons and other packs, but since this one is free and it's available right now in the marketplace, because I'm not really sure if the Infinity Blade is still available, anyway, yeah, we're just going to give this a try blindly, and <laughs> I know, if it doesn't work, we're going to be screw screwed and we're going to have to download something else but i really hope it does so yeah we're gonna be using this one go download it while you are watching the intro by the way since we are doing the intro do not forget to like the video and subscribe because we are on our goal to 1 million subscribers i know it does sound ridiculous but we are like only a few subscribers away we are specifically 900 thousand and ninety nine hundred and ninety thousand I think it's 994,000, 95,000, yeah, something like that, subscribers away from 1 million. So yeah, we are pretty close. So subscribe because we want to reach that goal and like the video because the support would be amazing. Also, I'm doing these daily on the Patreon. So check out my Patreon if you want to get these videos daily and you want to see the project files. And if you don't, just stick on YouTube, they will also come. So anyway, uh, let us get started by adding this to the project. And you might be wondering, like, what's project? Like, how do you add assets to Unreal Engine 5 projects? Well, you, just, you should just go and press the show all projects and it will actually show your Unreal Engine 5 projects. So this is the one I want to add it to you should just select the version that is compatible with the one that you are like you want to use so it's 4.27 add to project now we should just wait a bit and while it's adding it to the project there are a few things we want to set up actually it's already added wow that was fast so here is the mesh props no it's not this one weapons Oh yeah, it is this one. We want to just set up the sword. It's the one that we have the animation for. Actually, the animations show the character with an axe, but who cares about axes? I'm a sword guy. Anyway, here's our sword. Where are the textures? Okay, there they are. Wow, looks gorgeous. Anyway, we want to go to the blueprints. Oh, sorry, not these blueprints, the one, the one I made. So, blueprints, third person character. Actually, before we code even more, let us just organize a little bit. So, the blueprints over here, we're going to put them in the content folder because third person BP is going to get deleted. So, for the ones that, that are going to get deleted, I like to make them dark gray so that we can't see them. And yeah actually let's not organize more than this it's fine like this so yeah we should just go to the blueprints third person character and actually let us actually rename this so come on rename okay so i'm gonna rename this to bp base same as my old series and inside of the BP base, you know, it's not going to be the actual player character. It's going to be the base character. But we are still going to set up everything over here because... Actually, should we set up everything over here? I'm not really sure. Yeah, actually, let's do so. Because some enemies might be humanoid. And if they are humanoid, you're going to have to use the same stuff. So yeah, we can just inherit it with the children characters. Anyway, 
um, yeah, now that we've opened up BP base, we want to set up two places on the character where the sword is going to be on her back and where the sword is going to be inside of her hand. And this is going to be like very, very similar to the old series, except it's only like slightly different. So yeah, let's add a brand new scene component. A scene component actually tells you like it's a location inside of the character, inside of the actor, whatever actor it is. So yeah, these little things may be like, may seem useless, but they are the most useful things ever. So anyway, uh, for the scene component, I'm going to call this, call it weapon. Um, what's the thing called? Let's just call it weapon back. And you can just actually no, let's not mess mess with the location. I'm just going to duplicate it and call this one weapon hand. Now we're going to go inside of the skeletal mesh, which is like if you open the oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You don't want to see this. <laughs> anyway, if you go to the skeleton, it will have the mannequin. Um, you go to the skeleton tree and over here, you know, since we are using the mannequin skeleton, it's you can just go and select any bone you want and it will apply to all characters. You know, guys, I think not using the mannequin skeleton these days for any game, even if it's like super professional, would be kind of crazy. So always use the Unreal Engine mannequin. Anyway, for this one, we are going to be adding a socket on spine three. And I'm just going to call it weapon back socket. And in, in the right hand, we want to go to the middle finger and middle finger one, the first bone, right click and add another socket. For this one, I'm going to call it weapon hand socket and just save. Now, if we go back to the BP base, we should be able to parent these to the actual static mesh and the weapon hand you want to go to parent socket over here and add it to the weapon hand socket the location and rotation should be reset back to zero and same thing for the back so the parent socket should be the weapon back socket and um, location rotation back to zero now what we can do is we can pause the animation so select the static mesh, pause anims, go to weapon back and just uh, press this one. It really helps make the movements more accurate. So just do it like this one step back. And I think it's perfect like this. I am going to move it up a little bit by decreasing the snapping like this. And the same thing for the hand, you want to place it in a position that will be like whatever is perfect. So I'm going to make snapping smaller again and just place it over here. Now we want to add a weapon and you can do the weapons in multiple different things, like multiple different ways. You can either go with a um, like weapon actors, bl blueprint actors for each weapon, or you can go with an enum that is like a data table of enums that will have the weapon information and the meshes and everything, or just enum arrays, you know, it's up to you. We are going to be setting up this later, but for now, we are just going to go with a static mesh inside of the character to make sure everything is working. And then we will set the mesh from inside of the weapon system when we do it later on. So for now, I think it's okay to just use a normal static mesh. So add component static mesh. I'm going to call this one weapon. And the, where is it? Yeah, static mesh. You can just go and choose type sword. And that will actually add it. But where is it? Yeah, it is over here. So we should just go and 
do like attach it to weapon back and then reset the location back to zero. The rotation, we do not want to reset it because it will just rotate stupidly. But yeah, actually even the location, we want to move it up a little bit. Actually, the weapon itself, you want to reset it back to zero and you want to control it from the actual scene component. So yeah, just rotate the scene component and I do not think it needs to be moved, though it's going into her ass a little bit. So maybe we need to move it back just a tiny bit. Like this. So this is the weapons scene component location. And the weapons will be placed like this every single time. Now, as for the hand, you want to attach it to the hand. And then reset the location and rotation. And even the scale. You want to set up the like transform of the scene component and not really the weapon. So we're going to just rotate it. And I think it's kind of perfect. So yeah, that's fine. Now let's unpause the animation inside of the mesh, static mesh, skeletal mesh, sorry and give it a try and see what it looks like when we actually equip our weapon. You can see that the weapon is perfectly fitting inside of her hand. And wow, that's just perfect. Though the way she's holding it is kind of very sassy. <laughs> I like that though. It's cute. So anyway, um, there is like, since we actually didn't set up anything, the weapon will just go and be it doesn't have the perfect area if you are in combat mode or not. So we're going to have to go set that up. Now, what you want to do is the weapon itself, move it back to the weapon back because that is its default state. And now every time you, you move between those, you can just go and reset the location, rotation and scale of the weapon. And that will actually just make it perfect because we set it up like we set up the location of these and not the weapon itself so that's perfect now what we want to do is we want to go to the draw weapon macro and i think we are going to have to do it over here we want to get the weapon hand component scene component and the weapon itself and then what we want to do is we want to attach component to component the target is the the target is the weapon itself and the parent is the weapon hand. I think I'm not really sure. Um, the location rule, all of that stuff, just keep it to default. And let's just give it a try and see what it looks like. So it is going to be sudden and it's going to look very ugly for now. So yeah, just that was just a more warning. Anyway, if we press the Q button, you will see that it actually moves it. However, we are not really checking if our weapon is in our hand or not, because in case like combat mode is on, we want to do the opposite. Also, we are doing it like immediately and not while the character is doing the animation itself. So we're going to do it after the delay, but the delay, we are going to split it to two because we want to make sure that it's not too long because if it's too long, there's going to be a very, very long delay. So let's give it a try and see what it looks like. As you can see, so instead of 1.6 seconds, I'm going to make it one second. And then we are going to attach the sword or the weapon to the hand. And then we are going to copy the delay and add another one. And this one is going to be 0 0.6 seconds. And I think that's going to be a little bit better. Still a little bit too much. So this one, we're going to make it 0 0.8. And the other one, 0 0.8 also eight, so it's halfway through. Now we play. You can see that it is perfect. Now, if our weapon is in our hand, 
we are actually going to set it to be in our back. So we are going to be checking using the actual combat mode. So get combat mode, add a branch, connect it. And then this is where the check happens. If we are in combat mode, we will attach the weapon to the hand, which is perfect. But we are going to copy this again. But instead of the weapon hand component, we're going to get the weapon back component and connect it like this. Connect it to false and to delay. And let's give it a try. So compile and play. Press the Q button. And you can see that it is kind of perfect. However, there is this kind of problem with the back weapon rotation being kind of inside her body. So we're going to have to go here, go to the weapon back and just rotate it slightly. So I'm going to turn off snapping and do it like this. Now, if we play, no, that problem is still there. Let's just do it like this and give it a try. Yeah. It looks ugly though, so we're going to have to do it again. And stick it to her back a little bit more. Yeah, I kind of like this. I think there shouldn't be any problem now. Oh no, there is still a problem. I think we should move it farther and upper. Like this. Oh my god, stop going like that. Maybe it's like a flying sword, so kind of like near Automata. I know I'm making up excuses for this ugly thing, but hey, who cares? Anyway, you can just adjust it however you want based on what you have for your game. However, I do think that the like it is kind of sudden when she drops it or grabs it. So we want to add this like this interp to interpolation. So we're going to do that right now. All right. So first of all, I did forget something. The socket name over here, I didn't actually write it. So we want to get one for each for this one. It should be weapon hand socket. I'm just going to copy it and paste it over here. And for the other one, it's the weapon back socket. So we should also copy it and paste it over here and now in order to sorry i forgot to delete this in order to move it more slightly or, or more smoothly between the slots we should get something called move component 2 so the weapon just type move component 2 and connect the move to these like this and complete it should be just connect it to the last thing. Weapon is the component and over time should be one second in order to just test if this works or not. So we can just go and give it a try and you can see that it is not working. So in order for this to actually work, you want to go to the location, rotation and scale rule and you want to change it from keep relative to keep world. So just do it for all of them and that should actually activate this one. So you just do all of them, then compile and play. And even if you don't have anything over here, it will actually work. I know it's magic. You can see that it actually works, but we did make it too slow. So we're going to go with 0 0.4 and play. And I do think that 0 0.4 is still a bit too slow. So maybe 0 0.2 is better. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Also, it doesn't really help that the swords location is very low. So we should just go to the weapon back and maybe make it upwards more like this. Yeah, it's it's cool now and it doesn't really collide with her head. So that's perfect. So there you go. Actually, weapons work now. However, there is one last thing we want to do, and it's to disable collision. Oh, actually, it is disabled. That's weird. 
Maybe the pack doesn't come with weapons, but the last one I tried actually had collision. Anyway, um, yeah, that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel because that would be like super amazing. I do have lots of tutorials coming, so do check it out. Also, if you want to get these videos on Patreon, early access with the project files, do not like do not hesitate to actually check out my Patreon. I am trying to be very active there, so there's that. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Take care, have a great day, and bye.